Hi, this is Mark Abelli with The Art of Diesel, where we are all about diesel and automotive performance, efficiency, and independence. And today I'm out in my workshop. I don't know that I've shared this in a while. This is the way the workshop currently looks. We're now 24 by 60 feet, and we've got a nice high ceiling in the addition here. And since I last filmed it, we now have a concrete floor, and Border Collies love it. And so today, I've started to unload my two post lift. I bought this, uh, it's an Atlas 9KBP and I'm about to try and see if I can unload these big posts. I had other parts, these arms were kind of nested inside the upper post as were the cable and the hose here and this base plate was just kind of wedged at an angle in between the two. Uh, posts. The posts are mounted in the steel frame right here. They're bolted in. From the instructions I've read, I want to hang on to these bolts because they're actually used in the construction of the thing. And what we're looking at here is the base of one post. This is the carriage that will move up and down the post. The arms will drop into these holes. And you can see the chain sitting at the top of the hydraulic tube. So, we've got this post, it's at least uh, bolted down, I really haven't torqued the anchors yet. I've checked level, and these things are nice and plumb, they're within a, a fraction of a, a bubble width, and if you check different sides, you'll actually get different readings, because these things are not very straight, honestly. Um, but I think, uh, I think we're really, really close to being plumb with these, I'm not going to use the shims. Place the second column based on the first column. Once you've got that in place, this is really going to dictate where this is. Now, one problem I ran into in the instructions is that these dimensions are wrong. These things are not 13 and a half inches wide, um, and you won't actually achieve these dimensions. So I worried most about the internal dimension, and we're pretty close. I set the plate down and made sure that I would have enough room for the base plate here that goes between them. So I measured, I went from this corner diagonally to this corner over here and made sure that the columns were square and in line with each other. I took a red sharpie and just scored a line around it in case it shifts around at all.
I've got the whole thing together. I've run it up and down a couple of times. And, uh, well, I haven't put the ends on. I still haven't put the bottom plate down. But I wanted to run it up and down a few times and just check for leaks and that sort of thing because there's a fair amount of pressure in this line that runs through here. And um, I was getting a fair amount of leakage. I've lowered the I've lowered the lift to the lowest position possible right now. And I'll explain why in a moment. Um, but I always get leakage down here and I kept mopping it up and I tightened these fittings and I couldn't figure out why it was leaking. I'd seen similar leakage over on the other end and I've tightened up those fittings and that seems to have fixed the problem, but I was still getting it over on this end. And I was mopping around and then it occurred to me, there's this fitting that I've never touched and it turns out that my leakage is over here. I discovered that anytime I run it, I get drippage right here and I'm wiping some off with my fingertips right now. Um, coming from this plug. Now, these cylinders are the same on both sides, the hydraulic cylinders. And on the other side, this is where you feed in from the hydraulic pump to lift the cylinders. On this side, it's just plugged off. Well, because I haven't touched it, I never removed it and I probably should have done like this and put some Teflon tape on here and I've tried tightening that and it doesn't make a difference it still drips if I just go ahead and pull this plug we're going to drain any fluid that's left in this cylinder here that we're gonna drain any fluid that's on the cylinder on the other side and we're likely to start siphoning fluid out of the reservoir hanging on the side of the other pillar. So what I need to do is I need to take a couple actions to minimize how much leakage I'm gonna get because I'm gonna to have to remove this and at least put some Teflon tape on it. But by disconnecting this hose, I can minimize the amount of siphoning that will take place. While I was working over on this side, I found this on the ground. This is the plug I removed in order to put the system in in order to connect the hose down below on this side. So I've got an extra one of these plugs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make certain I have this prepared and ready to go. I'll cover this in Teflon tape and I'll have this ready to go so that when I pull one, I can put the other one in quick and minimize how much fluid I lose. Note that I've got this guy ready to go and at a moment's notice, All right, so I've got this thing working now, and what I want to ch show you is one thing you have to do. Um, these sink cables are really important because you're basically just going ahead and sending pressure to this tube and to that tube, and these cables are what synchronize it and make sure that they move up together. And what happens is, there's two cables. This one here, tends to be the first one to go up because it's got the shortest line to it. It's right next to the power unit, which is on the other side of this post. The cable right here uh, goes down across here and up over that pulley. Can you see that pulley? Way up there. Comes down and connects to this guy right here and vice versa. There's the same thing on the other way. Note that if this one is moving faster it's going to pull on this cable which will then pull up on this cable and make sure that this carriage moves up the same as that one and if it works the other way then you know this one here runs this cable all the way up here over the pulley and back down and connects to here so if this one's going faster in turn, it will pull this one up. So that is how the system remains synchronized. It's just that simple. And the directions that came with the lift say, tighten the one that goes clack first because we've got these, these little, um, this piece of metal in the back here with these notches in it is where the safety latches go. And as the thing raises, as the thing raises, it goes clack, clack, clack as it goes through those notches. And the same is happening on the other side. The, the side, which is going the fastest, 
is going to hit the next notch first. So it'll go clack, and then the other one will go clack, right? And so if that happens, if this one's the first one to go clack, then you tighten this. That makes sense? Because when I tighten this, I'm essentially pulling up on this one over here. And so I've been working on that, and I want to show you the results. For a while there, I was sh wasn't sure this one was going click at all, but when you hear clack, watch the movement of the little uh, cable, the release down here. You'll see a little red release here, so let's start lifting it. Let's run this thing up. Do you hear that? Okay, that's not... That's just a reset of the safety mechanism after a certain point. That's not actually uh, using the safety latches yet. The safety latches kick in in just a moment. Do you see that? When you hear a click, not just the one that's by me, watch that cable bump on the other side, that little red loop jumps. So I've got these very nicely synchronized. And I found another reason that this synchronization is so very important. But what happens is if these aren't synchronized, there's actually a mechanism in here that will engage the safety latches if it sees slack in the chain. So if these aren't very well synchronized, when they start moving down, if they're not moving down together, what will happen is the chain will go slack on one side and engage the safety and then you'll be wondering why the lift won't go down. So I was able to figure that out today and I was able to do this work and now you might hear it go clunk clunk a little bit as it moves down. Hmm, oh yeah. <laughs> you have to disengage the safety latches first and you gotta get up, up off the safety latches just a little bit, like that. And to go down we have to pull that and pull this. Now some higher end systems, you can do this from one location. Then I'll go over here and hit the release lever and it should come down. Mm. Here it is place ready to go and fully functional.